QuickBooks Online 2023. Enter transaction for purchase of inventory using bank feeds overview. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our bank feed practice file, which we set up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using incognito window or another browser. If using Google Chrome, you can open incognito window, selecting the three dots in the browser, opening the incognito window, typing into the search engine, QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We're using the sample company to compare the accounting view, the one that the bank feeds practice file is in, and the business view, the one the sample company is in. If you want to toggle between the two views, we suggest going to the cog up top, switch the view down below. We're going to duplicate some tabs like we do every time to put our major financial statement reports in, that being the end result that we're constructing from the bank feed data. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again as the duplicated tab is thinking. As the second duplicated tab is thinking, we're going to go to the middle tab, which is the first duplicated tab. Reports on the left hand side. Open up the balance sheet report. By the way, if you're in the business view, the reports are located in the business overview on the left and then the reports. That's where they're at. That's where they're at. Go into the tab to the right. We're going to go down to the reports once again on the left. This time open up the favorite report of the profit and loss, otherwise known as the income statement. Change in the range in from 010122 to 123122. I'm going to run it. That's what we have thus far, thusly far. Back to the middle tab, closing the hand boogie. Scrolling up to change that range from 010123 to, to 1231. Actually, wait a sec. Hold on. 010122 to 123122. Hold your horse. Hold your horse because it needs a hug. The horse. Anyways, that's the setup process that we do every time. So we've talked about some transactions that are usually quite easy for a small business to record using the bank feeds. And those are the, the transactions like the telephone, the utilities, the normal expenses that you pay on a day-to-day -day type of basis and the month end type of basis. We then talked about an equipment cash outflow for the purchase of a large item that we might have to put on the books as a fixed asset. The other kind of complication people often have is if there's inventory involved, if there's no inventory in your business, you don't have an inventory in a, you know, situation to deal with. But if you do have inventory, then you got to think about how you're going to set up the inventory process and how bank feeds are going to fit into that process. To think about that, let's first take a look at the flow chart over here. This is a desktop flow chart, but it's just a normal flow of the accounting cycles by cycle so we can think about how the inventory will fit into it. Now, the inventory is going to have a, a, a component on both the vendor cycle, which usually results in or will result typically in us paying cash at the end of the cycle for goods and services. We're purchasing, in this case, inventory, and inventory will have an impact on the customer cycle, typically the end of the customer cycle being when we get cash coming going up, hopefully at the end of the cycle, for goods and services we provide to customers. In the case of an inventory business, we provide the goods of inventory uh, to the customers. So right now we're thinking about the purchase of the inventory. If there's an outflow for the purchase of inventory, then we're buying inventory. Now how, so there's a couple different ways we can deal with the inventory. One, we can try to just stay on a cash-based system with inventory but there's limitations to the type of industry that might be able to do that. Number two, we track inventory as an asset, but we do it on a periodic inventory system. And then number three, the more full service kind of system, we track inventory within 
uh, the QuickBooks system using a perpetual inventory system. So let's go from the easiest to the most difficult with regards to the use of the bank feeds. The easiest method would be that you're going to try to stay in a cash based system and you're going to try to just record the expense of inventory, which is just cost of goods sold when you purchase the, the inventory. This might be use applied when you're buying inventory, say specifically for a particular job. So you're buying inventory for a job, instead of putting it on the books as an asset, you just expense it as cost of goods sold at the point in time that you purchase it. And therefore you can just use a normal expense type of form, or you can use the bank feeds, wait till it clears the bank and just record it as an expense type of form, like you would when we paid the telephone bill and the the other bill the utility bill uh, that we paid and then when you charge the customer the invoice you're not going to have to decrease inventory and record the cost of goods sold because you recorded the cost of goods sold first already so you just have to record a normal like sales transaction which you might be able to even record if it clears the bank as a deposit with a deposit kind of form to income and that would be like so you could do that with the bank feeds that would be the easiest a way to deal with it. Although you also might have sales tax that could be involved in there. And we might talk a little bit more on how to deal with the sales tax. So if you're not using the full service system of creating the sales receipt or invoices, the sales tax widget kind of thing doesn't work as well in internally in QuickBooks. So if you're trying to record sales with a deposit form and you have to deal with sales tax, you might have to manually calculate the sales tax, which is doable but you, you have to be aware of that as an added wrinkle the tax on things is always an added wrinkle now you can only do that with the inventory if your inventory is quite low so so and you're applying it to a specific job and the the time frame is pretty close but if you have inventory on hand to any any for any length of time then you're going to have to track the inventory as an asset so it's kind of a similar concept as we talked about with the fixed assets where we're gonna to have to deviate from a cash based system, we put the fixed assets on the books as an asset instead of expensing it, we have to do the same thing basically with the inventory, put it on the books as an asset when we purchase it. So that means when we make the purchase up top, I have to assign the inventory to uh, a, a asset type of account. Now, now, if I do that, there's two methods I could use, I could use a perpetual inventory system, or a periodic uh, inventory system. Now a periodic inventory system is one where all the purchases of inventory, I'm just going to record to an inventory type of account. And then I'll make my sales of that inventory. So let's say, you know, I buy my widgets, and I'm purchasing my widgets, I'm just going to increase inventory account. And then I'm going to just make my sales of inventory, not recording a decrease to inventory and the related cost of goods sold when I make my sales but instead just counting the inventory at the end of the day and then doing my cost of goods sold calculation at the end of the day, at the end of the week, at the end of the month. However, you're gonna do it on a periodic system, cost of goods sold calculation, beginning inventory plus purchases minus ending inventory is the cost of goods sold. The amount of the inventory that you sold based on the physical count, which you'll then, you might have to use a flow assumption. So I don't wanna get into it in too much detail, but like a LIFO, FIFO, or weighted average, and then you can record a periodic adjustment at the end of the day, week, or month, decreasing the inventory and recording the cost of goods sold. So in that case, you're basically recording the purchase of the inventory when you make the purchase, possibly with the use of the bank feeds as you make the purchase, but you're not assigning it to the actual inventory units within QuickBooks. You're not tracking the units of inventory. You're only tracking the cash flows of inventory. You have to track the units of inventory in a periodic inventory system separately, possibly on like an Excel sheet or something like that, where you're, you're counting the units when you buy them. And then you're counting the units at the end of the day, week or month. And then you're subtracting the two. And that's going to show you in essence, how many units you sold which can help you to figure out your periodic adjustments that you're going to make in QuickBooks, decreasing inventory, recording cost of goods sold periodically, weekly, daily, monthly, or, and so, or we can use a, a full service inventory system within QuickBooks. 
Now a full service inventory system gets a little bit tricky then because not only when we make the purchase are we recording the account going to inventory instead of an expense account like cost of goods sold, we are also counting the units of inventory, which means we have to assign an item, an inventory item to it, and that complicates the bank feeds. So we can't really do that as easy with the bank feeds, which means we might have to actually enter like a check or expense form first, you know, to record that information and then match it with the bank feeds, which is likely to happen if you're doing a purchase with a full service uh, inventory type of system. So we'll take a look at each of these kind of methods in the future. And when you sell the inventory in a full service system, you can't wait till it clears the bank, record the sale as a deposit because the deposit form isn't designed to record the tracking of the inventory. You have to use the actual sales forms, which are invoices and sales receipts, invoices for an accrual basis, sales receipts for a cash based system, and then and then match it to the deposit or deposit and match it out uh, in that way. So that's the general idea. So we'll try to, so I know that was a lot to kind of take in. So we'll try to show you this uh, as we go here. So if I, for example, if I go up top and I, and I enter an expense type of form here, you can see that usually I've been entering to a category like utilities. This is the form that's created when we do the bank feeds. But if I'm buying inventory and tracking inventory, I have to track it by item down here, which will track not only the dollar amount, but also track the units of inventory. That's where it gets tricky if you're using a full service uh, system. And so I'm gonna close this out. Do you wanna leave without saving? I'm gonna say yes. And so let's go into the banking over here and just take a look at the data input on the banking. I'm gonna go to the bank feeds if you're in the business or business view uh by the way it's going to be under the uh, bookkeeping and we're under transactions and then the banking up top that's where your bank feeds would be so so that's going to be our bank feeds i'm going to close up the ham boogie and let's look at this one right here so i'm going to pretend that this one was for the purchase of inventory now so i'm going to go okay this is for the purchase of inventory and i'm going to open this up i'm going to use the same cat categorized form which is like an expense type of form and then i'm going to say that uh, this is going to be i'll call it just let's do primary primary oh one or let's just do primary because i think i did the oh one before what do i have in here before primary let's do the oh let's add oh no i didn't do that one let's add the oh one so I'll do that, boom. And I'm just gonna make up this vendor and it's going to an, to an owner's equity account. So obviously that's wrong. It's picking, it's trying to guess where it's gonna go. Now, if it was, if I was putting it into inventory, I can assign it directly to an inventory account. But remember, if I'm not assigning an item, then it's, it's not gonna record the units. So that would be on a perpetual system. But here I'm gonna to try to do the cash based system and just record it to cost of goods sold when I purchase it, which is the expense account related to us selling inventory. So I'm not gonna have any tags or anything like that. And then if there was a split, then remember we can do the split down here, but you still, even with the split, you notice that you don't have the items. I can only apply it to a category. So that's kind of a limitation on the bank feeds if you're using a perpetual uh, inventory system and you want to you want to assign it to an item, which is why under that system, as we'll see in the future, you might have to make the expense form first and then match the expense form over. Now we could then create a rule for it, but I'm not going to create a rule this time because we're just going to be practicing the different kind of ways we can deal uh, with the inventory if this was the system we were using every time then of course we could just create a rule assigning it to go to cost of goods sold whenever we make this particular purchase but i'm going to say go ahead and add it and let's see what happens then if i go to the balance sheet and we run it to refresh it and then i'm going to go down to the checking account run it to refresh it and then we're going to go we're going to say hey we're going to say hey what happened Okay, Paso, there's the cost of goods sold, $30. If I go into it, we're into the expense form. So notice again, the expense form has the category. It's filling the category field. We didn't have the option to add an item, 
which would help us to create an item to actually track the inventory by unit, not just dollar amount in terms of the category. And then I'm gonna go back up top and you'll notice that it's we don't have an inventory account. We instead put the account directly into the, if I run it to refresh it on the profit and loss, the cost of goods sold account here. So now we put it into the cost of goods sold. Notice we have a cost of goods sold with no related income to it, which is not, that looks funny. That shouldn't necessarily be the case. But if we plan on make entering income with a deposit form, possibly if you were using the bank feeds or an invoice form or a sales receipt form shortly or soon related to that inventory, even though the timing difference isn't exactly right, it might still be okay, right? We might be able to, to run that system and not have a problem. However, if there's a big difference between when we buy the inventory and when we sell the inventory, then we're going to have more and more of an issue in the in the sense that we need to be tracking the inventory on the books as an asset and using some kind of flow assumption typically specific identification fifo lifo weighted average uh type of thing and, and then think about a periodic or perpetual inventory system we'll talk more about those uh in future presentations but if i go to the first tab over here note uh that if i if i look at my vendors now and I go down to my vendors on the expenses side of things and we look at the vendors. We now have another vendor that has been set up, which I, which, which was, was this one, I think. Uh, and then we have that expense form that was put into place there. And of course, if you're in the other view in the business view, it's in the get paid and pay area, there's your vendor. So we've got that added detail of the vendor uh, information. Let's just open up the trial balance to see where we're at at this point in terms of just looking at a trial balance because I think it's useful to see how things are constructed from the bare bones, the balance of the trial. Reports on the left, we're gonna say trial balance and let's run it from 010122, that's not a two, that's not a two, 123122, run it to refresh it. And this is where we stand. So we've got our asset accounts, just the checking account. It's a negative balance at this point in time because we have to deal with that beginning balance issue and we haven't recorded any income yet. And then we've got the asset account of equipment and then we're into the income statement, cost of goods sold, uh, telephone and utility. That's all we have thus far as we're constructing our financial statements. So we'll continue on next time.